There will be some of you like disgusted at that last statement. And to you I say, what's cracking everybody? Welcome. Tonight we're going to do some light trail photography into a beautiful town. Pretty stoked with where we are. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> Just not working. Gosh. Oh, so good. The other day I was driving out of town that's just there, up this road, came under this bridge and thought, ooh, I wonder if there's a photo there. So I came back to this evening to see if there actually is. Now this is, um, this is the view that I currently have. This is so cool, this spot. You've got the road running in here, but then you've got this bank of cloud just across here. And so it's this deep, dark bank of cloud. And then up here is all this really, really high cloud. So it creates this incredible contrast between the, the highlights on the edges of the clouds here, um, which I'm just loving. And they're really coming through, especially on the horizon there. Um, and then this, this sky that should go a pink and a purple, it should go a gradient from here um, all the way back. And of course the leading line, that's why the value of this road in this spot is because it's a leading line into the shot and as the sun goes down more and more we'll see the lights of the town really pop up and inhabit that part of the valley. This place took some finding. Originally I was going to perch myself on top of a freeway bridge overlooking the freeway but there just wasn't a clear picture and a clear run of the freeway down into the town and so I had to do a bit of searching and I ended up parking probably a K away and roughing it over all these divots and fences and stuff. I didn't go through any fences so the fences were already broken down or there was a gap in the fence and there's a lot of stuff a lot of junk around here so I didn't feel like I was trespassing feels like it's a pretty common area I'm just worried about the car not having wheels when I get back to mum and dad's car so the car is like over there around there over the back somewhere oh gosh I hope I can remember where I put it it was a dirt track to drive along with a bunch of potholes sometimes you have to go in in hunt and in search of the ideal position and then as you can see that's my tripod right there perched on this ledge the reason I perched it on a ledge was so that it wouldn't have any of this junk in the foreground so really it looks like I'm drone in it essentially I wish I did have my drone with me because that'd be epic and I put on a time lapse and it fell over already so I propped it up and we'll see if that's any chopper too landscapes you can have and the sun drops every single day and yet finding the right way to capture it and the beauty that it, it creates as it does that and then the night as it leads in is really really key so my plan tonight is to set a long exposure on the car lights going in so they start when they're out of sight but I capture them all the way in and sort of curling round on the motorway There'll be some other lights on the bridge and whatnot, but to do all of that whilst this high cloud goes bright pink. So that's the plan. Now, to do that, it's a lot about timing. So what I'm gonna do is time how long it takes for a uh, vehicle to get from here all the way through, and that will give me the basis of shutter speed that I need. It takes one minute from when a car comes into sight to when it goes all the way down the road and gets out of sight, and it takes a minute for the cars on the other side to come up the hill. Uh, I guess they have to break as they go down the hill. I don't know how that works. So I'm guessing it's about 30 minutes till the sun goes down and we can expect a bit more from the sky. I can't do a test shot at the moment because a minute exposure just blows it out. In fact, even a second exposure just blows it out with my ISO on the smallest it can be and my aperture on the tiniest it can be, which is an f-stop of 16 on my 20 mil 1.8. So we just wait. Just gonna wait now it may, I may need to take a couple of shots I've already taken a shot of the actual um, the the floor of the valley so I've already taken a shot of that which looks good and that may be what I use in the end and then I may have to take a shot that uses just the sky so I take the sky for what it is when it is and then I might need to superimpose on top of that a shot of my lights 
going down. So it may end up being three shots. So another handy tip for you. I've actually focused at the bottom of the road. That's where I think all the action and the heart of this shot is. Uh, if you focus about three two thirds into a shot so about the second third line in most landscape shots most of it should be pretty much in focus so that's where I focused and then I set this up and I cannot move this so this is all locked down with these um, bits and pieces it, it cannot move because if it moves it stuffs up all the layering I'm going to do later on so once you lock down you're like this is the spot I want well part of the frustration is you can't then bung another lens on and point the camera in a different direction you're committed to this one shot for the duration of you being there but I think that's part of the beauty of landscape photography you're investing time you're investing patience you're investing creativity and skill to create something beautiful that others go wow and it stirs something in others. It stirs something greater than, than you, greater than me. Um, and, and I love that. I love that the art of photography can do that in such a, a wonderful way. As you can see, the colors are starting to come through. It's usually 15 or so minutes after the sun goes down that you can see the sun is about to go down that you actually start to get those colors. So it's always good to be prepared, but don't be disappointed when the sun goes down and the colors haven't happened. You've got to wait for it to happen. And they always happen on the back of the sky first before they happen on the front of the sky or where the sun's actually going down. So as you can see that pink glow is just looking majestic and the sky is starting to pick its colors and it's wispy clouds, just beautiful golds and oranges and slowly coming through to some pinks with that, um, that just deep red reflecting off the ceiling of the clouds. Just Oh, it's captivating. Just captivating it is. I did not expect this. Look at that. It's stunning. The low cloud is catching the beautiful reds of the sunset. And then it's just cushioned by these pastels above it. Wow. You just in moments like this, you're like, this is so special and so incredible and so amazing. I just want to sit here and be here. It, it consumes you and leaves everything else out. The other worries and concerns and stuff you might be carrying around. There's something about nature's show of brilliance and beauty that has been stirred by a creator that we can just sit and be in it and find something more in it than perhaps what we first realized. And here comes that cloud I was talking about. Look, it's like fairy floss. Just scattered across the sky. Oh, the sun's gone. But its effects aren't. There's this sort of the, the pink beauty of those high clouds creating an opposite leading line into our subject which is the end of the freeway and I've put the um, freeway coming in from the corner of the shot so as to lead the eye straight to where we want it to be and then just above the dark cloud on the left hand side it's just that that beautiful like ribbons of red and gray um, or pink and gray or orange and gray just mixing with one another um, and then more is still coming more is still coming it just looks wonderful still wearing my t-shirt it's freezing here the wind of the valley is just coming up it's just icing me over and yet all my gear is on top of my jumper yeah winner okay I realize some of you are visual learners so this should help so at the moment I'm overexposed at five seconds but what's what happens when I take a shot it's going to take five seconds of these cars going down the road and you get this image and then when we zoom we pull up this image and we zoom in you can get start to see what I'm aiming for yeah so that's that's where we're going the lights are as we get darker those lights will become brighter and brighter and more and more prominent and more creative I hope when it's pitch black, I may be able to just open up the shutter for as long as I like and, um, and really uh, go to town. For those of you that don't realize, every DSLR or mirrorless camera has a setting called bulb. You get 30 seconds and then you get a bulb and bulb, you can have it run for as long as the battery will live. Once it's pitch black, you can basically use bulb for forever 
and it won't ruin your shot. It's almost like as much light can come in, will come in for those first however long and then after that you just get the effects of the light rather than the intensity of the light so it doesn't blow things out, it doesn't um, make everything just like scorch and bright. And normally what you do with bulb is you'd have a shutter release cable and you plug it into your camera, it's a button. You press the button down and then you lock it in and you're good to go, you just time it. However, I don't have one of them, but what I do have is my app through SnapBridge. And the way it works is if you put your camera on bulb and then fire up SnapBridge and connect it through the Wi-Fi to your camera, then you can just control how long bulb works by pressing it in and waiting for as long as you need to wait and then pressing it again and it opens and then shuts the shutter. So it's awesome that technology can sort of develop and replace some of the mechanical things that we've had. There'll be some of you like disgusted at that last statement and to you I say <laughs> that's cool no worries. So I feel like I've made the most of the landscape and then I've made the most of the sky. I think we've got two epic options we can use. One of the sun and that cloud just the, the bank of cloud and the ceiling of cloud red and then the fairy floss um, above and now I just need to wait shiver a little for the light to vanish and the lights of the town to light up it's starting to happen already there they are but if you go right out here it doesn't look like much but if you get closer in you can really start to see um see though that that town shine uh, that town is back as marsh it's just down the road from a place called melton where i grew up and have a lot of fun memories and so we've managed to travel into state for a couple of days to really uh, enjoy family i've succumbed to the cold and i've got my jumper on now you may be wondering why I need one shot, why don't I just take a couple of shots of the road but every time you, you take a shot it stops, you take another shot there's a tiny gap in the light trail and I don't want light, light, don't want gaps in my light trails, I really want just a solid line all the way through. So we're now down to 13 seconds, uh, that's how dark it is, I've got my jumper on because I've started to get like hypothermia or frostbite or whatever that is. And um, yeah, we're still waiting, but getting closer. <laughs> I made it back safely to the car. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was shady as. All right, uh, take a look at the road I had to travel and drive back out of. On either side of the track and where I was, there's bottles and there's cans, there's bumpers belonging to cars, there's mattresses, there's wooden boxes of junk. It's like, oh my gosh, it looked like it was, it was a graveyard where junk goes to die. Whew, so glad to get out of that. Um, Snapbridge was a great idea until it packed it in and wouldn't connect with my camera. But uh, I waited it out. I handheld some one and then two minute exposures, which was um, was a good challenge. I then dropped my aperture to around 7.1 and the app started working. And so I busted out a two minute on that. The reason I dropped the aperture was I wanted to decrease the light burst that was coming off the headlights. So hopefully give a bit more definition to the light trails going up and down that road. And then I made it out alive, car intact. Woo! So here's the finished image. It's what they call a composite. It's where you take various other images and you put it together to create one. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of composites. <laughs> Some of you may hate it. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's right. Um, if you love this video, subscribe. If, In fact, if you've loved it, you've already subscribed. And I'm so thankful that you have. Uh, it's just so encouraging. It doesn't happen heaps but when it does it's just like wow somebody else joining in having fun uh get, i can get to know you you can get to know me and you can learn from um, from the stuff that i'm learning about creativity and photography and video so i hope you have an amazing week i'll catch you soon bye And I don't know if you can even see my face. So there we go. I'm beautiful again. <laughs> There's traffic down there that won't shut up while I'm filming. <laughs>